Hi and uh, welcome to the C Blobs YouTube channel. Usually I don't normally do videos regarding like personal statements or any video like this. Normally I just do like the dissection playlist. I am going to continue with the dissection play playlist if anyone has uh, clicked on this video and wondered why there hasn't been any uploads in a while. Um, but for now I just want to like quickly get this video out of the way because I've been actually wanting to do it for a while. Um, so the main question is like how do you actually like smash through the personal statement what do you actually need for the personal statement and I'm just going to give like a general overview for, like, like not a massive in detail thing but I'm going to tell you like all the main main points like pretty much all of the main points I can think of anyway um, of what you need to put into, into your personal statement So the first thing that anyone wants to really put into the personal statement is the intro but I'll give you like one recommendation and that's like don't start the intro straight away you want to sort of leave the intro for a while and you won't actually uh, put it you could even put it last if you wanted to um, but with the intro you you have to like plan it and make sure it stands out because that's the first paragraph that someone's going to look at if they are looking over your personal statement um, what I can advise you with the uh, intro is that a lot of them flow pretty similar, similar for like most personal statements. So what you want to do is make sure that it uh, doesn't really um, sort of copy someone else's team and it's a bit different. A lot of uh, personal statements t tend to like start with something like I've done this at a young age or I've had a passion for this or um, you know, you need to sort of think outside the box. Like, for example, if we're going to look at uh, personal statements for 2021 or 2022 or even the ones in the future, people will probably be talking about uh, COVID-19, for example, and how it's affected us, uh, sciences, that sort of stuff. You don't really want to go through that sort of model. You want to actually make sure it stands out in a different way. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, make sure your introduction is a bit out the box and uh, it starts off. Uh, really nicely now uh, with the body this one matters as well um, as in the body will probably be about four pages long not not four pages sorry four paragraphs long and that will usually be about I'd say about 100 words in each paragraph because you need to remember the, the personal statement itself is around 4,000 characters with spaces uh, so you need you are kind of limited but um, initially when you're making your personal statement what you want to do is make sure that you just write as much as possible and then add in whatever else you need to at the end uh, but with the body what you usually do is fill it with like your extracurricular stuff your work experience and uh, with work experience and extracurricular stuff um, you know you can put stuff in like hospital work experience or like uh, work volunteering in a care home but extracurricular just put in like uh, activity that you do in your free time that sort of stuff um, there are like some stuff that you do try, need to try to be original with this as well like I mean, a lot of people do, for example, NCS or D of E. Uh, that's basically the Duke of Edinburgh. A lot of people do it, so you want to try to make it stand out even further. Make sure that your personal statement is really, really impressive, and you need to sort of. You don't need to look for a hobby. That's different. You just need to show that you have a passion for a hobby or something that you enjoy doing and uh, then uh, talk about that but in regards to like the hospital side and the uh, sort of how it links to medicine you might want to do like um, the skills that you've gained from anything that you've done and you you want to talk about them you want to reflect on them reflections like a really really big word in medicine and pharmacy and optometry and any healthcare sort of subject uh, with the word reflection it basically means whatever you've done you want to just look back on it and then talk about what you've done so the best actual like the best way I've, do, I've found is you can use this model called the Carling's model so with the Carling model you want to basically make sure that uh, you set the scene and you need to first talk about what you've done so like I for example hiked up a mountain and uh, it was for a charity run and then what you want to do is you want to describe what your action is so that'll be the first part is the context 
and second part will be the action so that'll be the a for the from the calling model and you want to just talk about like what roles and actions you've done and uh, how that relates to the context so first context is i went to uh, for example a mountain hike and then the second thing is the action so like what you did and um you know what what was the actual action for example someone tripped up on a rock and you helped them then the results which is the r so then what happened from the action that you just did and uh, what result did you get um so the main thing is actually the result here so the result would be like for example you helped someone and uh, you got them help straight away you learned a bit of first aid maybe from a team another team member or you already were first aid trained and then you helped them out and uh, you've gained a positive outlook from this then that nicely moves on to learning and what you've learned from the experience so you need to talk about like i've uh, from this experience i kind of learned about how the first aid can be applied how it can be help someone or you can talk about like i gained empathy from this or i saw an effective i basically been a, uh, like a communication with the person i sort of helped them up or whatever needs to be said and then you need to now link it to um, how medicine and you can be like this sort of is very similar to a patient doctor relationship and um, you know it's about in, in the future i probably will see this like when i need to build up a patient uh, doctor rapport and um, like how you will apply it or how you're planning to apply it or even if you've already applied it what have you learned from what you've applied that's basically uh, the overall sort of gist of reflection so what you've done uh, what happened how what you saw from it and what you learned from it is basically the summarization of that part and um, you know you have to make sure that the wording is right as well when you're doing the personal statement you can add some really good words to it i mean you could like use words like um, i don't know like altruism adaptability consequently um, just don't use similar language that a lot of other people would use in their personal statements so at least it can stand out a bit i mean uh, there's like some languages like uh, like caring or i loved this or i enjoyed this and i cared for someone like that'll be you know recycled a lot through many many personal statements and also what you should really ideally do is when you're make originally when you're gonna make the personal statement you need to make sure you sort of research what medical school you want to go to which one you're interested in and which one you have like a high chance of getting into and when you look through their sort of entry requirements page you'll see how much they weigh up the personal statement and they'll see you can see like how important they actually think it is that way you can know like what to focus on when you're doing your personal statement your uk card your bima or whatever um so that's pretty important as well but um just look into what they actually want on the personal statement like what do they look for is it the empathetical individual do they look for someone who's smart do they look for someone who's caring and or has a good communication is just what the person really has so uh, that that does matter Stay to the end. now the ending will have to also be sort of left towards the end just like the intro so what you want to do with the ending is because with the ending what happens is it funnels down and it ends up being quite similar for a lot of personal statements so you just want to make sure the ending is uh, you can fill it up with maybe a hobby or maybe what you do in your pastime and uh, how it helps you to relax so you can talk about um you know what you want to go off into the future what where all this experience could possibly take you towards or how you see yourself in medicine or you know does it basically you need to add a sort of future aspect to it so like your personal statement can flow from like past to what you've done um what you're doing now and then what you hope to do uh, never ever put in experience that you're gonna do though like as in work experience or voluntary work like i was chosen to go to a hospital uh, but I never go and never ever do that just do the stuff that you've already done like your experiences that way you can reflect on it properly so that's quite important hey, so now it's like the flow the flow is is a good question a lot of people ask um the flow is basically like how the personal statement will uh, run through and how it connects 
so you can fix this usually by just use it just make sure you add a lot of connectives like furthermore and after this and but this and make sure you you put i mean put like your point work things in chronological order and like do well, i started off with this first and then i did this and then i did this and maybe like what sparked your interest in medicine originally uh, you can put that in the introduction it's just you need to make sure that uh, with the flow uh, that you watch out for your grammar and make sure you read over each line when you're reducing your overall word count because you want your personal statement to go over the word count originally and then you want to condense it down and usually this will happen in a few drafts it won't happen straight away um, you should ideally just start in the early summer so around june july -ish, and then slowly slowly work your way through and i think october mid-october changes each year what the exact deadline is but it's usually mid-october when they have the deadline for veterinary and medicine and history and i think uh, engineering and a lot of other courses but that's only for oxford uh, oxford and uh, yeah so oxford and cambridge uh, but generally make sure that um you know with the with the sort of personal statement um you have to take time and you have to do a few drafts so start getting started early is like one of the best ways you can actually do it the thing to like sort of avoid is a lot of people do put anecdotes like a little story that they've done in the past of what sort of helped them i mean that it happens a lot in personal statements especially the newer personal statements um so you know there's you kind of need to think outside the box and it is hard to think outside the box with personal statements uh, a lot of the time we think your personal statement will be very different from everyone else's but uh, to the person who's usually reading it, it ends up being quite similar so what you want to do is make sure you know it does stand outside the box at least if you're going to put in an anecdote make sure the story stands out make sure it, it will like lead on to the next part correctly so you do need to make sure that the, uh, the anecdote or whatever you want to put into your personal statement stands out quite nicely another thing you want to do is, is basically just sell your idea forward and um, you know you want to make sure that the right people read it so don't get too many people to read it get like about three four people maybe or max uh, max about seven people to read it maybe your family your friends and then mix it in with like a uh, medic a uh, non-medic uh, someone uh, who's a doctor you know just get a nice like spectrum of different people to read over it and that way you can get a wider range of criticism uh, on your personal statement and uh, put only your most recent and most interesting stuff into it don't put like stuff that you've done in year seven or year eight make sure you put all your recent work experience that way when you're doing your when you're going to the interview panel you can sort of think about what you need to put into the personal straight statement straight away and you know then that way uh, you won't trip up in interviews because they do ask uh, about your personal statement in interviews so you do need to make sure that you're up to date with everything so do make sure you also look at your personal statement before you go into an interview um yeah so that's that's more not really related to this video but uh you can kind of get the gist and uh one more last piece of advice i think i could just give is um take your time with it and each time you do a draft leave it for three days and then come back to the same page and look over it because there's going to be like really bad mistakes and errors that you're going to look over and you're going to be like oh wait i didn't realize this at the time you want to kind of develop between each time you want to let your brain relax between each time you make a draft of your personal statement main thing is just start early and uh, make sure you put as much things as you can and then slowly slowly condense it down and the flow comes more towards the end and make sure when you flow it um, read over each line put the right connectives in and uh, you know do it in what other order makes sense whether it's chronological order so date time or whether um, it's uh, whether it's order that makes logical sense right thank you for watching and uh, see you guys soon